Hello, welcome back. Today at Brooks Equipment's Fire Tech Talk, we are talking to Todd Stevens, Operations Manager at Industrial Fire Protection on Sustainable Technologies. Todd, thanks so much for taking time to talk about this today. Thanks for having me, this is fun. We hear a lot about sustainable technologies today. Can you define that for us and why it's such a relevant topic today? Sure, I mean, the simply defined um, sustainability is about meeting the needs of the current generations without damaging the needs of future generations and keeping a, a balance between economical growth, um, um, uh, environmental care, and social well-being. So what that really means is that that's the definition of sustainable, but what it means to fire protection is as a fire protection contractor and fire protection companies out there need to consider sustainability when designing and installing different systems within the fire protection market. So making sure that what we're installing today is the right solution for the, the application and for our customer, but also maintaining that sustainability that it's gonna last year over year and not something that we need to replace you know, uh, six months down the road. We're all familiar with the phase out of the production of Halon for environmental concerns, um, but now there's some concerns about greenhouse gases. Can you help us understand the new U.S. EPA restrictions and which agents are impacted? Sure, 100 percent. And, um, you know, this is something that has recently hit our industry and has, has made quite a bit of an impact, but the it's called the AIM Act. And the AIM Act essentially was, dis was established in December of 2020, but was gone ahead and implemented in January of 2022. And what that is, is the phase down of HFC products. So some of the common HFCs that we used in suppression, HFC 227, HFC 125, they are be being phased down 15% uh, by 2020, uh, 2036, excuse me. Um, but what we saw in the industry is that because it's such a small piece of the HVAC market, the AIM Act was really directed at refrigerants. And the um, HFCs within fire protection is only about a 0.06% of all the HFCs out there. So a lot of manufacturers actually made that decision right in January of 2022 to just stop production altogether or stop even uh, designing or, or manufacturing the systems as a whole. So what started out as really more of a phase down turned out to be a little bit more of a phase out. But there's a lot of other opportunities and products that can replace them. Um, the other key element to remember there is that it doesn't, that act does not pertain to existing recycled agent. So there's a lot of recycled HFC product that is out there and will continue to be available uh, that we can use if a system discharges, you can refill that system. So similar to Halon, which was stopped manufacturing in the early 90s, it's still available today if necessary. I think we'll see HFCs uh, long ahead in front of us in the future. With regards to HFCs and, and other clean agent systems, um, there are recycling agent, uh, companies out there that will purchase old HFC products or, or FK products or Halon products, and they can, again, um, bulk that in storage and uh, sell that as a recycled agent. Um, it's important to understand, too, that when they do that, um, there is a process and a requirement for verifying the, the purity of that product and maintaining that it's still adequate for uh, systems and to be used as a recycled agent. In the past, we relied heavily on smoke detectors for actuation of gaseous fire systems. How is that evolving today? It's a great question. I think a lot of it involves, evolves based on the actual application that we're installing. And yes, smoke detection has always been a key uh, detection system because we did a lot of data centers and special hazards. So that was always the perfect product to pick up on early warning detection and, and smoke in the event of a fire. Um, but as those applications that we're protecting changes, you know, it's not just data centers, it's um, uh, fuel spills, all right? So maybe we want to look at flame detection in that scenario. Uh, one of the big topics these days is uh, energy storage systems or battery storage systems. And with that, we look at off-gas detection uh, that's going to help pick up a event in a much earlier stage from that perspective, or even hydrogen detection. So really the, the, the evolving market of detection is being built on the different applications that we're involved with. Will you explain what is done for inspection, testing, and maintenance of special hazard systems, and then walk us through some of the NFPA standards and typical frequency of inspections? Sure. 
Yeah, uh, the uh, NFPA standard that we would really go to initially is NFPA 2001, which is the standard for um, extinguishing systems. And in that, talks about chemical agents, inert gases, um, and talks about the frequencies that are required for inspection. Typically, a lot of the frequencies are about every six months uh, to visit the site and do some visual inspections as well as some physical inspections on um, looking at the tanks, making sure that everything is still properly in order, um, and going through the process of checking the liquid levels of the, the agent that's in those cylinders or weighing the cylinders. Um, and then another part of that is the detection side, uh, which we still use NFPA 2001, but it also spills into NFPA 72 that talks about the frequency of how often we test those smoke detectors or you know, early warning detectors and so forth. So that's all part of those two standards. And it's, it's, uh, the inspection of clean agent systems is, is a, a pretty simple process. And again, typically twice a year is when we're doing those. What is new with the Fire Suppression Systems Association and what are some of their initiatives to improve safety for building owners and occupants? So the FSSA Fire Suppression Systems Association is probably one of the key associations in our industry uh, with regard to providing the proper knowledge, training, and understanding of special hazard systems. Uh, we've recently gone through a strategic plan, uh, a planning meeting that we did la uh, late last year and we've developed a new program called ASK, which is Advocacy, Solutions, and Knowledge. And that's what we're basing um, the association moving forward to make sure that we can provide, uh, advocate for our members and for our industry, and to help push knowledge out there to the industry and have solutions that um, contractors and manufacturers can use uh, to educate. Uh, but it's really, uh, you know, between their training programs and they have uh, design guides that can assist with, with um, again, contractors, AHJs, owners, engineers, to help them understand a little bit more about what we do in the suppression industry. You seem to have some innovative approaches to fire protection. Is there something in the NFPA codes and standards that allows you to install systems and equipment that is equivalent or of higher quality than those NFPA prescriptive requirements? That's a, an inter interesting question and, and it's important to understand that um, as our industry evolves and changes, there is newer technologies that pop up to help us provide the proper protection for our customers. But sometimes that new technology happens and the NFPA standards still need to get caught up to that, right? So all NFPA standards in chapter one have always had a statement that talks about new technologies and that the NFPA standard does not restrict the use of new technologies as long as that technology does not provide less uh, support or less protection than what's intended by the standard. Some of the newer NFPA standards are actually taking that a step further because there is so many new technologies out there um, by adding additional requirements. So NFPA 409, which is the standard for aircraft hangars, says that you can use technologies, new technologies in chapter one but now they also mention that if you use technologies, they want to show a risk assessment. So not only are you allowed to use that new technology, but you just simply have to prove that through a risk assessment and answering questions and providing information to make sure that it is providing the protection as required. So it's, it, again, we need to try to step, uh, stay one step ahead. Uh, so the NFPA standards, like I said, have always provided that option. We're just seeing people use it more and more because of the newer technologies coming out. Well, Todd, this has been a fascinating discussion. Thank you so much for your time and your expertise. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. And thank you for watching Brooks Equipment's Fire Tech Talk. We hope you enjoyed this and found it informative. Please be sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.